No matter who tries to change it, no matter what doctrine or dogma comes up, holiness still becomes thy house, O Lord. Holiness, living righteously in the sight of God, obeying God, denying this flesh, and living the kingdom life, living the abundant life. What is up, all my true seekers? This is Pastor Jacob with another biblical first responder video, and this is Witness Wednesday. You guessed it. You know what I need you to do. All of those wonderful, beautiful, helpful things that make this channel grow. We almost there. Give me the 1,000. Quick. Let's do it. Okay, so the topic of tonight's Witness Wednesday video is holiness, ladies and gentlemen. Sanctification, if you will that God has raised us up in Christ, that God has resurrected us. He has made us born again, spiritually brand new in Christ. And therefore he has brought us from dead to life. Now, with that being said, we can't live like we're still dead. We can't live like we're still in the grave. Many of us have the problem of wanting to claim Christ, but still live like we're dead. We still want to do the same things, watch the same things, say the same things, listen to the same things, and live the same way. That is not how this works. Nor am I saying, hey, let's go to a legalist thing and say we can't do anything at all, right? Or that we can't listen to nothing, or we can't go nowhere, we can't do nothing. But there are things about our lives that we have to deny when we come to Christ. Different circumstances call for a different breed of sanctification, for a different breed of holiness. When God has called us holy, meaning set us apart, that means we can't be over there hanging with these people. We can't be over there smoking this. We can't be over there drinking that. We can't be going to these different places that we shouldn't be caught dead in. Claiming the name of Christ. That is the point, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of times what we want to do is go easy on people. And we understand the world we live in, that everybody wants us to be nice and everything has to be nice and sweet. But ladies and gentlemen, can we at least tell them the truth that the wages of sin is still death? We don't preach repentance anymore because repentance demands a change of life. Churches today are half full of fornicators. They're shacked up today like it's no big deal. They stagger in drunk to the services. Hooked on dope and everything under the sun. Well, preacher, we ought to be gracious. We ought to, we ought to be kind to them. We ought to try to, yeah, we ought to try to help them. I agree, but agreeing with their lifestyle is not going to help them. You got to tell them the truth, folks. You got to tell them the truth because they don't repent. And until they repent, they're not right with God. We must be adamant that we're telling people the truth of the word of God. That no, you can't sleep with that woman that's not your wife. No, you cannot sleep with that man that is not your husband. All because you are uh, getting ready to get married and you're living together, that doesn't make it okay. It's still sin. Even if both of you are saved, if you're cohabitating, it is still sin. And somebody may get technical and say, well, technically cohabitation isn't sin. Okay, but guess what? It puts you in the situation where sin can be uh, 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 easily grasped. It puts you in the situation where people can look at your situation and assume that this is what you're doing. Because what do uh, uh, most people who are married and live together do? They have sex. So then if you're not married and you're living together, people are going to assume that you are having sex, even if you're not. So you're letting your good be evil spoken of. So then don't do it. Avoid the very appearance of evil, ladies and gentlemen. But we want to try to do all of these technical uh, uh, gymnastics to try to figure out what we can and cannot do. What's the line of sin? Well, the line of sin is right here and I'm going to get as close as I can to it without touching it. That is not the way a Christian lives their lives, ladies and gentlemen. That is not how it works. We must be holy. We must be set apart. Now, does that mean I can't listen to no music at all? No, that doesn't mean that. Depending on you. Now, your holiness might say no for you. Does that mean that I can't have a, a, a glass of wine? No. But for you, it may be no. But what I'm saying is, when we come out of the world, we can't 
get on, I'm just using this as an example, we can't get on a Facebook or, or different places and holding up bottles and look at me, but I'm saved. You're not saved doing that. You're disrespecting God. That's what you're doing. You're showing God that what you want to do and what you want to be is more important than what he told you to be and what he called you to be, and that's holy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a duty. We have an obligation to be holy. If you're claiming the name of Christ, live like it, think like it, talk like it, act like it. God bless you.